in today's Sunday solution, we're going to remove that ugly mud flap right there. It's time for another Sunday solution. Let's, Let's go. go. So there's a couple reasons I'm doing this. Number one, whoever installed it didn't take into account that the exhaust is right here. So it's got to go for that. And then the second reason is I had some undercoach lighting installed. And when they ran it, they ran the lighting along here and then down that channel. And what's happening is they literally put them right behind the exhaust of the coach and it's causing them to melt and burn them in half. And then I don't have any lights from the middle of the coach around to the passenger side. So we're gonna fix that too. But let's get this mud flap off first. Drinking out the bottle, not thinking about tomorrow. Don't worry, that's a motto. So we keep moving along. All right, so this is the issue I was having. The guy, I don't know if you can see this down here, but the guy at Red Bay, I'm not gonna mention his name, but I'm not real happy with him. He installed this LED under coach lighting. It cost me 900 bucks. And this is the, what do you get, okay? You get a piece of plastic, some cheap Chinese LEDs, and then he routed it right past this exhaust. I put this tape on there to try to, after I discovered it, to keep it. But the heat of the exhaust melted it. And then you got these screws down here. It actually melted the plastic here. Lucky it didn't catch it on fire. So I'm gonna remove all this, redo it. And, and here I use sticky tape. I think that's what I'm going to use because I don't want to see this channel okay, sticking down from the coach with big old zip ties. Oh. And then I got to reroute it all the way around. I'm going to look at it and see what I can do. But I got to get it all the way over to the wheels. That's a complete ripoff. Out of all the vendors in Red Bay that I've ever used, he got me the best. And a lot of people won't go on the forums and tell the truth about some of the vendors because they're afraid. Because Tiffin Group, you know, pretty uh, protective of their own. But you gotta call it what it is. That's a complete shit install. But pardon my French. And that's the best you can do. You shouldn't be in business, in my opinion. And, you know, it took me uh, probably three or four emails before he would send me the new LED, this stuff. And I didn't even want it, him to send it to me. I didn't want it for free. I didn't want nothing to do. I just wanted to know what brand it was so that I could fix it without the lights being different colors, if you follow what I'm saying. And... Instead of him giving me the brand, he sent me the package, which is generic, uh, because he probably didn't want me to know how bad he got me. But that's enough about him. I'm gonna fix it. It's like the old saying goes. That's why I do a lot of work on my own coach. If you want it done right, you better do it yourself. 
Otherwise, you're gonna get this garbage. I'm lucky you didn't burn my coach down. So, we'll see. But I'll get back to you when I decide what I'm gonna do with it. But we'll go from there. I mean, look at this. It's just flopping around in there. I mean, come on. Seriously. It's crazy. Let's get it off here. Boing. I guess part of this is my fault too. Because I should have inspected his other work before I hired him. But I got a little overconfident in the vet Red Bay vendors. And uh, this one got me good. I had him do headlights and this undercoach lighting. And it was $1,400. Never again. Drinking at the bottle, not thinking by tomorrow. Don't worry, that's a motto. So we keep moving along. Try to show this the best I can under here, but that's the new reinstall of the LED lights. Basically, right up, right there where that screw is, I don't know. I'll have to try to highlight it the best I can because it's dark down here. I had to run, I had to refasten that plastic strip that he used in because it was all hanging down and falling off. And then I came over to here, I drilled a hole in the fiberglass right there, brought the strip out and stuck it to the bottom and ran along the bottom here. I ran around the hitch and it's all with that 3M sticky tape stuck on there. I cleaned it with alcohol first, of course, denatured alcohol. And, well, I'm not sure if it'll stick or not. I didn't want to put the aluminum frame on it that I used over here, which I'll show you. And basically what I did is right here, I drilled another hole and went back up inside. I put that tape on there. Let me get me situated. I put this tape here, ran it up inside and then brought it around, put some more tape on it. You can see Right here, that's the hole he installed, which is directly behind our exhaust. So I have a feeling, I'm hoping that this is far enough away that it won't melt it again. Then I went to Lowe's and I got this channel, this aluminum channel, and I installed that with self tapping screws, the zip ties are there in case the uh, 3M doesn't hold up and it drops. That'll catch it. And the reason I had to do that is he ran plastic. Literally, now if you can see how close that is to the exhaust. And all that melted and deformed. And actually burnt through the wiring back there. So I came up here, tied it back in right here and spliced it and then went from there back to where he did so let me crawl out and we'll go through the rest of it oh i don't want to make it a video about bashing this kid but i see a lot of people on the forums and facebook uh the tiffin groups and they all talk about how great he is but i suspect most of these people haven't climbed under their coach. I don't think I'm an anomaly by any any uh, stroke of luck or bad luck. Um, he doesn't have a shop. He does these things at night sometimes. He did mine at night. Did the He did the headlights at night and he did the undercoach lighting at a shop that he borrowed. It was rather cold out. And let me show you a couple of the other problems. He did these at night. They're LED headlights. They still haven't been adjusted right, which I gotta do. I just haven't gotten around to it. 
but they were beating on the frame this this slide so bad and working it that a couple days later stress cracks showed up as they were having trouble getting it fit so that's that so that's going to be a thousand uh, dollar repair probably and then immediately after at about the same time the coach melted and caught on fire the wiring i had to come up front see if I can get this on video. Yeah, I guess it's pretty good, I guess. Again, I got this Lowe's, this channel, half inch channel aluminum from Lowe's, I'm sorry. It cost me $11 for an eight foot piece. And what they had done, and this kid in particular, they ran a piece of plastic a little lower, and they drilled a tiny little screw hole in the fiberglass down there on both sides. So it was actually down low. And Within 50 miles, a screw pulled out. It broke off, it basically the screw was there, but it broke off the plastic piece, the cheap plastic that he uses, and on both sides, it broke it. So I reinstalled this myself, this aluminum frame, and you can see it's screwed to the bottom here of the generator bracket. I don't know if I can get that without moving under there. I don't really want to crawl under there again. And it's solid. It ain't moving. I zip tied it there just for extra security. Same way with this side. Can't move it. So, and the other issue I had with him, still have, is he wired these up wrong, his headlights, when you switch them over to LED, both sides. And what has happened is, I noticed when I left, and he did these late at night, and some of this is my fault because I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have allowed it. I should have checked it. But when you turn the headlights on in the Freightliner chassis, you get a white light during the daytime on your dash, your, your board there, which shows your odometer and all that kind of stuff. So ever since he installed them, he must have something backwards because I have the nighttime light on all the time on the dash. So there's probably a wire reversed. It doesn't really bother me, only in the sense that I paid so much money. He obviously doesn't know what he's doing or he just doesn't care about his work. So I just want people to know that you're not always getting what you pay for. Um, you have to be careful which contractors you use in Red Bay. I got overconfident because everybody I've ever used has been stellar, except for this kid. My suggestion be, and I had uh, Trevor Nichols in Red Bay do all my carpet work and some other work, and he did a phenomenal job. I understand he does undercoach lighting, so that would probably be who I would use if I was gonna put it in again. Or maybe MSRV solutions. I haven't used them, but I've heard good things, and I'm sure that the workmanship isn't what this is. I should have done some research or crawled under one of the coaches at, the, uh, at Red Bay Acres where we were staying and took a look at the workmanship before I paid him that money. I didn't balk at it. I didn't argue price with him or nothing. I just said, yeah, do it. So part of this is my fault. I, I learned my lesson, so. And as far as the mud flap, I'm gonna go without the mud flap. It's not gonna be used. And I'm gonna try it, see how it works. I like the look better, to be honest with you. And as I said earlier in the video, there's so much tail swing back I really don't anticipate, anticipate any stone chips coming back there damaging my toes so well, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video and if you did give me a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next Sunday solution <laughs>